Hello, another video. It's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous day here. This is one of the, the prime times to be outdoors for me. Like, uh, normally, like, from the, let's say, end of February to the, the, the through whole March is, 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 is very nice. Uh, it's, it, it is absolutely one of my favorite seasons. Um, everything is so kind of pristine and fresh. Uh, and it, it's just gorgeous. And uh, you kind of appreciate the warmth of the sun. And uh, for example, now I'm uh, sitting here and drinking, drinking tea. Uh, the sun is truly uh warming <laughs> it's really 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 nice if, if you live in finland like there's always something uh to complain about so the weather changes here so much and the seasons are they can be harsh they can be brutal they can be beautiful but it's it just doesn't make any sense to to, to complain all about uh, all, all the time about them so it's kind of a I don't know. So, autumns are too wet, too cold, too long. The winters are, you have too too much snow, you have too little snow. The winter is too warm, it's too cold. The spring is too late. Uh, the summer is too warm, too cold, too wet. It's just, it never ends. So, I'm just kind of trying to avoid that a bit. So, if you want to have a steady, nice weather, you don't need to complain about, then you should move to Central Europe. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, this is a kind of a long video with many knives to show. And by the way, you look this river, um, if you see here some movements there far back, uh, it could be otter. So here's uh, lots of them. Uh, well, it's possible that it's also fish, maybe a, a trout, who knows. But just, just a reminder, <laughs> so it's possible that there is going to be movement because I went uh, downstream and I saw otters there upstream, so they they could come here. Yeah, but anyways, um, this is a long, long video with many knives to show, so let's go. Um, it's of course self-evident that the handles are important uh, knives. It's it's the, the place where the blade connects to your hand. So it's, of course, it, it's extremely important. And this also has to do with the, a bit with the uh, reoccurring theme on my video with the overall like bond that I have with the knives. So that is kind of, have been a bit of a theme in the, in the channel also. And the handle is, could be maybe the most important thing on creating the bond. So I just wanted to talk about the handles now a bit. And I have uh, five best handles uh, that, I, that I chose that I think are now uh, my my top favorites. Mm, but they're really like only now. I, I don't know, it could be, ch it, it could change. I have few knives coming in and, uh, but at the moment I feel like there's like five knives, like I wanna maybe list as the, the favorite of, of, of handles. It's just kind of fun to do these lists because it kind of challenges me to really think like why do I like some other handles more and here is lots of knife, knives uh, left out that also has a, have a great handle so don't take this too too serious. It's just in my opinion an important and fun discussion. So I will leave here then uh, five best knives uh, and I will go through them at the end um, where to start um, let's start with the Mora uh, this is the Mora Mora classic that uh, probably everybody knows <clears throat> the interesting thing is that I've been actually a bit critical towards Mora, but I actually love this this blade, to be honest. So it's just the sheet is is bad, and and the price is bad. But otherwise, mm, I really like the handle. 
even now with the gloves on this this form the simple simple form it fills up the palm really nicely and you can do extensive amount of like work with this one and you don't feel fatigue it's a bit on the shorter side of handles but it doesn't matter it's just enough that it kind of locks in very nicely made of uh, birch wood and it's painted red the classic mora mora style a very comfortable very very nice knife to have on the hand so if, if i have it on the hand i know that i can do a lot of things with this one so it's just uh, the pricing is bad and the sheath but anyway so started with this one and i have to say in in general um i prefer knife handles that are simple so that's just uh, uh my like preferred style of of, of knife handles of course there are like variations of it and there are like even of these knives like knives that have contouring uh, and different kind of forms so and it, it depends on the blade and it depends on the use so i wouldn't say like i'm like uh or how should i say it's not so simple so but if i would have to choose i would probably would lean towards uh knife handle being quite simple it just kind of allows many positions and also i've kind of noticed that with uh, some knives they it's kind of too much contouring it gets a bit annoying it can create hot spots and uh, yeah but that was nice mora and uh, we'll go actually with a similar type of handle this is the ahti Ahti tikka. Very nice knife. This has <coughs> a bit of a similar handle than the Mora. But it's a bit beefier. And uh, it has this kind of a little bit of a more aggressive thinning towards here. Not too much. But because this is overall a bit beefier, uh, this is not too thin, this portion of the handle and this portion of the handle needs to be a bit thick if you are doing carving and uh, extensive amount of work so it doesn't create hotspot here so this is a tad bit better than the mora it's absolutely gorgeous this is this has such great control i like there's no finger uh, how do you say sharpening choil it really is one of my favorite uh, like small book goes definitely so great great neck knife and uh, also fantastic value so i'm actually thinking of buying one with the curly birch handle also just to have two so this had this is such a simple great great handle and i like uh, with book handles the idea that some knife makers uh, just uh, apparently don't understand that if you uh, diminish the length of the blade you shouldn't diminish too much the length of the handle so that is kind of a typical of the puko so you have a small blade but the handle stays the same then then you have the four fingers grip you have the beefiness for carving whatnot so that is just a kind of sensible thing to do okay Ahti, great 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 knife uh yeah let's go with the different material now we we'll actually go with so this is the jagari puko and uh also probably many knows this and uh, many <clears throat> have this also in my opinion very nice the handle very very nice nice texture it doesn't feel too plasticky but it's very grippy um for this type of knife this just works and i would say like my preferred handle materials are are wood and and my carta for sure but i have nothing to complain about this also there's one thing uh to note i will compare this actually uh, to the sisi puko there's the ip pelton and sisi puko um this is a bit thinner 
the handle and uh, somewhat high and there's one interesting thing with this kind of rubber is that uh, I use this quite a bit uh, in the garden uh, and I use this as a kind of batoner a lot and it's great with that because of the steel it's so damn durable the steel and the, and the grind is nice and it's just a kind of workhorse knife but there's one thing that actually uh, that I don't like that much um, and why I actually preferred my carta and wood also there's one thing the the feeling of the hand is one thing but then there's one other thing um, the shock effect of uh, batoning with this one is much much bigger than for example with the Bravo, or even with the Sissi Puko, because this has more beef, or with wood. So it kind of sends this wave. So if you, and I do batone a lot, so, and I put this in hard use, so I don't know if, if, if that's also the kind of, I have, that's the reason why I have noticed it. That if, if I really, really hammer through a log, I just feel like kind of fatigue and, uh, even in my shoulders, <laughs> like uh, the shock waves. So that is something which I don't like that much. But it's a great, great uh, handle also. I like the... It kind of locks in very nicely with this pommel. Uh, kind of the finger uh, joil or it's kind of a place for the first finger. You have a good control. Uh, maybe if I would change something, I would... Maybe have it a bit beefier. And let me actually compare it now to the Sissipuko immediately. So the, the Sissipuko just has a bit of a beefier, this part. Well, in general, it is a thicker, thicker handle. And I prefer this, really. So if, if I do a lot of carving, if I do a lot of uh, like a work long periods, with this one, with the pelt on end, I don't feel that much fatigue. So this feels the, the hand better. And with the pelt on end, uh, I don't feel the, the shock wave that much. A bit, maybe. So my card and wood are better, but uh, yeah. So then I will just actually go immediately with the, <clears throat> with the pelt on end. This is an absolutely fantastic knife was actually uh, just yesterday chatting with uh, with Ipe Peltonen. He lives in the same village, just talked about knives and uh, outdoors and whatnot. I'm going to do a interview with him uh, in, in, in a short uh, in a short while rather. Here yeah, actually states if you can see if he's cars. Yeah, this this is a great handle. Um, there's this kind of texture here, but it doesn't really bother me because the, the pressure doesn't come. It comes here mainly, so it's... I could live without this, but it's okay that it's here. It, it, it doesn't really affect me. I could understand, like, in a... I guess in a tactical situation, it just gives extra grip. So I don't mind it. It's okay. I, I could have it either way. Uh, but it's a great handle. I like the beefiness, beefiness of the handle, but nevertheless, you have a good control. And also, I need to say one thing, and this is something uh, which I have been uh, also thinking when I've been the, when I have done the videos on this kind of uh, connection that I have with knives. One thing is that <clears throat> the handle is very important, of course, but also the balance. So if you look like here, the balance is just on the right fi on the first finger. And I wouldn't say like it's the most important thing, really, uh, but it, 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 it is there. And, and sometimes I do like notice, notice the, the balance and then I'm just kind of, it, it adds something. It adds, could add a bit to kind of a certain feel of the lightness that the, the knife is not too blade heavy or too handle heavy. It kind of a, gives a bit more light feel maybe in the hand. I have to examine that a bit more, but it's not so simple. There's not lots of knives that have a bit 
let's say heavier blade uh, uh, but it doesn't really matter the handle is nice so, or they could have a bit handle heavy so it's not the most important thing but it's out there the belt on it is great and the balance is great for such a long uh, blade really uh, belt on it is one of those knives in my opinion that are um, kind of how, how should I say like a big small knife so it's a big knife but I sometimes it kind of feels like it would be smaller because it's so nimble it's so controllable and I'm just kind of sometimes even like surprised oh this is actually quite long and a heavy blade but yeah it is a great one okay uh, then I will go actually with the Bravo now that I just mentioned but toning um, this then on the other hand has this kind of a much more contouring uh, this is a more of a survival slash bushcraft heavy use knife uh, so here it is good to have a, a bit of finger protection uh, but I really do like this. this this handle is very nice in its own realm so to speak um, it's a bit blocky maybe but it's still nicely uh, rounded everything um, here you have of course the full tank so you could say in winter that, that's why for example I, I prefer the CC Puka because uh, definitely when it's really really cold so it's nice to have kind of a this steel covered uh, yeah but this is this is nice the hand locks in it's not too thick it's not too thin it just fits my hand very very nicely I like the control also with this knife it's a, it's also it's a very heavy blade but rather controllable so if you see like I have the first finger here and this is one thing that Bark River does great is the balance they're almost always like very central balanced and this adds to the controllability and if you see it gets really near to the blade there's no not much of a sharpening choil which I like so for such a heavy blade rather rather uh, controllable very nice and this is the best knife that I have for batoning so without any competition this is just unbelievable this kind of high uh, full convex it's just insane how good this is the tip is something which should be a bit a bit rope i have sometimes a bit i do worry a bit with this kind of convex uh, bark river tips a bit too thin in my uh, in my opinion but it has held a uh, great great knife and the thing is that it has my carta and like I said, like with the Jakare Puko, for example, I do feel the the shock waves, and that's why I actually use this a lot in the in the garden. So I, I put a fire there uh, very often, and I use this like maybe even most as like a garden knife. So this is a great camp camp knife. Okay, great knife. Um, then. This I want to also show, yeah. Then this one. And this is something which is then a bit different. So this is the Mora uh, 2000. And this is very nice to handle, I must say. Um, this has such a great handle for the use that I'm planning for this. So it's a, in my opinion, this kind of camp knife. It's not really a big big time carving knife and for that the handle wouldn't be optimal also it's kind of thin here so i would imagine i would create a bit hot spots but for a fishing knife for food prep really nice control with this one really really nice so it, it locks in it's simple uh i can put the finger very near to the to the blade no uh, sharpening choil which i like with moras so this is really really not controllable nice uh, nimble light knife but but with great handle so kind of a thin a bit bit high and uh, this type of design is really really nice it's a bit similar than the Jäkäri Pukko handle actually in the in the kind of the height and the length and uh, the thickness 
so very very nice um yeah let's go ahead it's going to be so long video <coughs> let's go with this yeah this is the one of my latest knives it's the kivalo design gorgeous gorgeous knife and this is somewhat strange to handle it's not typical puko it's not typical anything so this is I would say weird handle but it's very nice very very nice and one thing i have to mention still with the with the knife handles it really is in my opinion uh, maybe the most important uh, proponent of of for me of of creating the bond and there's one knife still uh, this kephart that is really really good uh, example of that but would say like for me and this may sound a bit controversial i would say for me handle is even more important than the steel so it you can't have a knife of course without the, the blade so it wouldn't be a knife without the steel so that is in that sense the most important thing but i would rather have um let's say really really comfortable beautiful handle that fits my hand than uh, like a let's say perfect grind makes awesome feathers and uh, has a great steel for example i would rather have a knife that is a has a great handle than a, absolutely the best steel so uh, it, it's just i'd rather take a knife with that kind of handle with me on that that is kind of the, where the bond becomes so it, it's uh, yeah but maybe i will go more in depth when i have the cap heart here but yeah this is great um uh, it's kind of large, one of the largest handles of, of the bunch, but then it has a very uh, short blade. So a good example of this kind of Puko philosophy. Um, it works nicely with uh, with gloves on. I love this type of, has this a bit, this kind of rich. I will go more uh, in detail with that also in the, with the Orjärvi Puko. It has this kind of rich and uh, nice contouring here, a little bit of a palm swell. And especially with the gloves on, one of the most controllable handles that I have with gloves. It, it's great without gloves also, but this is something which I've noticed. So that's why I've been carrying this now uh, as a neck knife for two weeks. So it's just a very, very nice handle. Okay, the Kivalo. Oh, actually, I said like I'm going to choose five, <laughs> but now it's getting a bit harder. Because all of these has good handles. I probably have to drop the, the cape heart away though. Yeah, yeah, okay. I will, I, will, I will drop this away, but I really, really do like this handle. But these are so comfortable. But, but this is a great example, the cape heart, of what I just was talking about. Like how much the handle affects like my feel for the knife my bond with the knife because immediately when i got the knife i just thought it has really nice handle it's so simple and it's so controllable and especially for use that i'm doing so this is also not a carving knife I use this as a mushroom knife i use this as a food prep knife for that it's absolutely fantastic there's so easy positions to, to be taken um and this this walnut feel is very nice like i said like i i really do like wood like wood my carta are my favorites and uh birch bark of course uh yeah but this is, this is just it's not the the best knife for feathers for sure it's not the best knife for carving but i rather would have a knife like that has a good handle like this and it's very controllable than the knife that would maybe do that bit better the feathers or whatnot because you can do feathers with this also and you can make a fire with this one no problem but i just often just take this with me because i love the handles and the one thing is which i like is that this kind of simple the simple form but then it has a bit of a larger the back side so it tins down here and this adds nice control because you have this kind of uh handle which is kind of lengthy and if i have the the hand here 
the thing that it has a bit of a lot kind of how to say beefier the back end it gives support for the little finger and all my fingers have a role when i place it when that when i place the, the knife in my hand they all all cover the the handle and this creates it's, I don't have this type of handle actually, so Kephart, in that sense, is a, is a nice design. So, but that's this immense control. Very nice, very nice handle. So, but these five are, at the moment, what I think to be my my favorites, and I don't I don't want to put them in any order. So these are the five best knife handles I think that I, that I have now. There's many knives that had great handles that I gave away, I sold them. Uh, there's knives that are coming uh, like next week to me, many knives that I know that are, are going to have a good handle. So, But at the moment, I think these five could be the best. There's also lots of knives that I left home. Uh, but yeah, I, I just kind of had this feeling that like these are at the moment my favorite. So let's start with the Oriarvi. So this is the legendary Fiskars Oriarvi. Uh, one of the most sold knives uh, in Finnish history, or maybe the most sold knife. This and the, I guess, the Martini Ilves. This has such a great handle for woodwork, for everything. It's so controllable, so light. Yeah, the balance is good actually. Yeah, the balance is there. I like this, this kind of. Uh, this design is, in my opinion, nice. This, this is very recognizable from Fiskars. So here is kind of flat portion and a kind of a small pommel here in the back, which is nice. And then here, interestingly, you have this kind of kind of sharp ridge. And this is, of all the Finnish Pukos, this is only Oriarvi has this. And I think it's based on a kind of a old knife type that they made, like in the area where I'm actually at. So because I live in Fiskars, uh, so the Fiskars kind of took inspiration of that old model and created this Oriarvi based on that. Also, it had this kind of upswept, upswept blade. But this is really, really comfortable. There's just nothing that I want to complain about this. Great Oriarvi. And then I guess I will go with the GNS. What I like about this, and this is also, by the way, one of those uh, knives that I kind of felt the connection immediately, and just mainly because of the of the handle. So because the handle is just absolutely gorgeous. It's well rounded. This is which I really prefer this much to the to the Bark River Bravo, for example, because that's a bit blocky. It's so nicely rounded, and this gives this kind of a puko feeling uh, in the hand. And I'm accustomed to use puko, so that's why when I had this on the hand, I, I think I said even out loud, like, whoa, god damn, I love this handle. And uh, it immediately kind of created a bond. So it's it, it really is great. And then it has this contouring. You have a Kind of a how do you say this? I don't know what what you're calling this finger choil or well this kind of a dip here pommel, but everything is so nicely smooth, smooth, and then there's enough beef here. So I I've been using this uh, extensively with with uh, with feathers carving whatnot, and I don't feel uh, hot spots. So this might be the most uh, comfortable uh, knife handles that I have of all. Uh, full-time knives that I have so really really nice and good texture also this is something which I haven't actually been now talk, talking about but uh, I actually prefer this kind of texture over the uh, this Bark River Bravo for example which is kind of polished to my carta uh, this just it feels almost a bit more how do you say like how, how would I say it, this feels more familiar for me 
because it this has this a bit of a like, texture of wood maybe and uh, also the roundness here so great great design by LT right and one of the reasons why I really have been carrying this a lot and it has a great blade that's nice feathers carving all, 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 all those things so the, I love the blade shape also but the handle just is so great that immediately when I had this knife uh, in the same day I actually was searching uh, another versions of this so maybe maybe even with wood or saber grind or whatnot so this is great and then <laughs> maybe I will go with this one. Oh, and here is now a very interesting story with this one so this is the uh Pukko, custom made pukko by Kari Sastamoinen in Pialavesi, uh, in birch bark uh, handle. Great, absolutely great. The, the funny thing is that if you look this closely, this is not the same knife that I did the, the review uh, a month back. And the thing is, and this is an interesting story, I was uh, chatting with, uh, with Kari, the, the, the maker of the knife. We, do uh, chat time to time and uh, have been kind of uh, talking about knife philosophy, his ideas and uh, my my ideas with uh, with perfect handle because Kari puts a lot of thinking uh, with uh, with the handles so that it's really really important for him and he he wants to make like usable like use knives and the thing is that uh, when I received the knife from Kari. Uh, that was like absolutely awesome knife. Amazing. So I, I really I put it in the list uh, of five best knives of the year. But then I, we were chatting with Kari and uh, he was like kind of playfully just asking like uh, what would I change with the handle that I got? Because I, I was praising it and it was but, but is there something that I would have changed? And I said like yeah, maybe if you would do some changes, I would maybe thin down a bit the back end, just a bit, because it needs to be a bit a bit beefier here. But just a bit, I would thin it down, and overall a bit like scale down, just a hair. And then Kari suggested that okay, maybe if I would send that knife back, and he would have a another use for that blade and I didn't really use that knife so it was practically new um, he would make me another one and he made me another Pukko it's the similar size similar thickness the grind, everything but this is just scaled down the handle and I have to say I like this even more now <laughs> so this is just perfection also looks very very nice well the the old one also looked nice but this is just fits my hand like a glove and birch bark anyways is, is one of my favorite handle materials if not my favorite really it probably is my favorite like comfort wise it's probably not the most durable but with the comfort it's it's insane so great Oh, and then this, I actually added the Brisa Trooper in, on the list, although I haven't <laughs> used this that much. Uh, but this is just absolutely gorgeous, the handle. My God. Uh, change a bit. Sorry. Position. Yeah, this is... Uh, a bit similar to, to the Bravo, quite similar to uh, Bark River Gunny, to be honest. Uh, very similar contourings. So everything is really done like, uh, how would you say, like not too aggressive. That is, that is the word. So not, not too aggressive. So, and this gives this kind of Pukko feel. So there's enough beef here that I have been doing push cuts, feathers, no fatigue, nice, a bit of a palm swell, not too much, 
So this really is nice. This is one of the nicest, like full tang, this kind of this type of survival bushcraft knives handle. I really, really love it. And also like the looks of it. So this kind of black uh, curly birch, awesome. Uh, and the texture. Brisa does very nice. The, it's very smooth, but then creepy. So very nice. And it has this bit of like place for the first finger and the balance is right there so this is this is one of the most balanced knife in overall that i have like yeah it's gorgeous okay and then last but not least maybe i could even go as far as to say like this is my favorite handles of, of all <laughs> So maybe it's not coincidence that I left it to last. This is a Tommy Pukko by Risto Mikkonen. Absolutely gorgeous to handle. This is fills the palm beautifully. It has this kind of teardrop uh, form. A bit high here, a bit similar to, to the Kivalo Pukko, and it has this ridge also. And uh, I don't know, it just has something. It's so comfortable. It's so, so comfortable. So immediately when I had this also in the hand, I thought, oh my God, I want to have another one also. And it, it just, it feels gorgeously, the palm. So it's not too, uh, for example, it's better than the Mora. So it's not so aggressive, but, it, and it's a bit longer than the hand. It's, uh, yeah. No, this, this is just gorgeous. And uh, also how this, polished uh, curly birch feels in the hand. Uh, I think there's a linseed, linseed oil. And uh, yeah, this is just absolute, absolute pinnacle control that I have with this one. And on top of that, a grind that couldn't be more perfect for woodwork. This kind of rhombic scandy, high rhombic scandy, absolutely gorgeous. No finger, uh, joy, uh, sharpening joy, nothing. So. Of all my knives, this has probably the best control overall that I have with woodwork. So, but these were the knives. Um, just my my idea of the handles. Uh, I think it's just a very, very, very important. Hey, but thanks for watching. Uh, see you later. I'm continuing here. Cheers.